Cheers and welcome my friends, I'm Holotrak and this is going to be my general tips and tutorial video for Imperator Rome. None of these tips really fit uh, any of the other categories that I've done. If you want to see those other um, tutorial topics that I've covered then hit the playlist link, it's in the description or at the end of the video. Now let's get to the general tips. The very first thing you want to do every new Imperator game is set your national ideas so you get your government bonus. If we have a look at this, here's our nation overview and here are our three national ideas because we're a civilized nation, two in case you are playing as a tribe. And the symbols above that show the kind of idea that um, this government form requires to unlock that bonus over here. So if we put two military ideas in here, we go for the martial ethos and uh, the ordered retreat and over here we take the oratory idea then this bonus uh, gets a check mark and we're getting additional power points and that actually makes a massive difference over the whole course of the game um, considering that uh, we were gaining five here in oratory power so it's like a 20 percent boost we were gaining four in civic power so that's a 25 percent boost over the course of the game that can make a huge difference and if you increase in power level uh, in rank level um up to a regional power. If you're a regional power, you actually get a higher boost. Um, this actually gets doubled, so you get two in military power additionally, two in civic power, two in oratory power, and two in religious power. That makes a, a lot of difference over a hundred years. Now, you don't uh, have to take these ideas um, according to what's in there, but then you miss out on the bonus. Different government forms have different bonuses. Carthage over here, for example, needs to take a civic idea and two oratory ideas. Um, if you want different ideas, I actually recommend that you maybe switch your government and embrace uh, a different one. You can see that a plutocratic monarchy, for example, would take two civic ideas, one religious idea. So maybe just switch your government form so that you can keep your bonus. So one thing that I learned during the Creators MP about pops is that if you don't have a certain pop type already present in a province, they will never grow there. So I have a city over here that doesn't have any slave pops in there. So slave pops are never going to grow in that city. And generally, you want slave pops, you want freemen pops, and you want citizens um, in each of your provinces so that you get technology from the citizens, uh, manpower from the freemen, and taxes from the slaves. If you don't have that, you might be crippling yourself inadvertently. So a good idea is to at least have one of each of these um, types in each of your provinces so that they can grow on their own. Now, you can use this to manipulate the... Um, way that your population develops in the game maybe go for a province uh, like this one or like this one where you promote everyone to citizens so you only have citizens in that um, specific type if you're following a certain strategy and this is also the way to get rid of tribesmen we have some tribesmen over here and if i promote this guy and i keep an eye open for when this tribesman is grown because they will still um finish growing if there was already that type of pop growing there even if they are not currently not present so if there was a slave growing here that slave would also finish growing but if i wait for this guy and then promote him uh, there's a chance of uh, a tribesman never growing in there and that's generally what you want you don't really want tribesmen as a civilized nation um, because they're not very happy if the civilization level is too high in your country so keep that in mind you need slaves if you want slaves um, uh, to grow in your cities you need the other guys for example here i don't really want tribesmen in my in the middle of my country so i'll just promote this guy now no tribesmen will ever no tribesmen pop will ever be uh, growing in the center of my of my country so maybe you're looking for a nice place to start and learn the game and the area that i would recommend for this is crete so i recommend you take knossos maybe because they have they have a vassal right next to them and uh, they have an alliance uh, but can be any of the areas in Crete and uh, the island is nice because it is fairly isolated from the rest of the stuff um, that goes on like um, Greece for example is kind of a slaughterhouse dominated by Macedon um, whereas here like you have your local neighbors you can go for some uh, early warfare and you should probably unite the island um, very very soon but after you've done that you're like not under a lot of uh, threat and you can just expand on your own and you also have really good trade goods um, on the map like you have this wood over here in this province um, that's quite nice you have iron over here which gives you the heavy infantry so you can have heavy infantry and build your own ships from your own island 
and Knossos is the only the only country here that has access to this wood. And then you have some glass, which is a really nice um, thing. You have some marble, you have some wine and olives to keep your your people happy. And then you have the, the base metals as well. So this is a really, really nice starting area. Um, take one of them, take over the other the other kingdoms and then that way you can slowly learn the game without being under too much threat but you still have the opportunity to then once you've unified this area and you feel quite safe enough you can build ships and maybe invade the mainland maybe pick off a couple of the smaller greek states or uh, maybe try to conquer one of the other islands maybe um, cyprus from Phrygia, if they're in one of their uh, very frequent civil wars um, if you have better tech you might also be uh, looking into conquering Sicily, all that kind of stuff is possible. I found uh, Crete a really interesting place to play around. It's kind of the, the starting island um, in my mind, very comparable to Ireland in uh, Crusader Kings 2, where you can also learn the ropes of the game. Let's say you're playing a migratory tribe and you actually want to pack everything up and leave. Now, to migrate, you need a lot of oratory power. Um, as a base, it's 75 if you have uh, a lot of decentralization, uh, 75 oratory power. Um, it won't be enough to like pack up all my provinces here and leave. I have quite a few of them. But what you can do, and what is quite helpful, is you can use your civic power instead. So it is totally possible to move everyone out of a single province. So. I would suggest that we move all these guys into maybe Teutonia Minoris over here because they share a Z zone. So, yeah, uh, move all these guys over. Now, this is like an, an empty province. No, actually, it isn't. Um, now it is. So, no one lives here anymore. We lost control of this place. Um, we're also going to move all these guys into Teutonia Minoris. All right. And then these guys, we're going to move this dude to Teutonia Centralis. Um, this guy, we're going to move to Teutonia Centralis. And then this guy, I guess we're going to move to Teutonia Minoris. And so now at this point, I'll, my, I'll, my whole country consists of two provinces, which I can easily just grab with the amount of oratory power that I have. And then we can start marching. Um, that's a quick and easy way to get on the on the move, start your migration without having any time pass. And that should be possible for most of the smaller countries, um, for most of the smaller migra migratory tribes, unless you have like a very, very big amount of provinces. But over here, for example, they have three provinces, so they would have to spend uh, three times 75 oratory power. But if they just pack all these eight pops into one province, then they can save a lot on the very, very precious oratory power that you need to just pack up and go. Let's talk about barbarians real quick. If you're in an area where you have to expect these kinds of barbarian hordes that um, spawn from these barbarian strongholds, then uh, you should know uh, a couple of things about these. You can actually diplomatically interact with them if you click on a flag or right click on a province that they occupy. And you can pay them off so that they actually leave you in peace. It is a bit of a difficult proposition because um, I experienced a bug where they, even though they were paid off, they would just move between my provinces. And every time they went into a province and there were no troops on there, the province got the looted modifier, which is minus 0.5 population growth. That's actually pretty nasty, but that will be fixed in the future. You can also, um, if they already have a province uh, occupied, you, you can actually diplomatically offer them to settle down and just become part of your population in that province if you um, fulfill certain characteristics mainly having their culture already present in your country um, but also if you're very powerful and you can also make a client state out of the province that they occupy so basically you have like a small um, barbarian tribe settled in there you give them that border province and everything's fine if you manage to vanquish them um, there's a chance that you get a slave pop so you can see these guys have uh, one possible slave pop if you defeat them you can get a certain amount of money and a slave so it is actually worthwhile um, attacking the barbarians and taking them out and then the other thing that you really need to know about these barbarians is they always use the same combat tactic which makes them very vulnerable they will always use shock shock action and shock is actually very very vulnerable against bottleneck so if you just keep your barbarian fighting armies on bottleneck you're always going to have um, an edge against these guys 
and they're not going to have a good time. Obviously, if you're Greek, then you want to use the phalanx because that's even better because you take less, uh, a fewer losses. But everyone has access to the bottleneck tactic. So whenever you see barbarians marching towards you, put your guys into the bottleneck tactic and watch these guys just get crushed. If you're playing a monarchy, your heir is actually very, very important because uh, the heir is going to become the future king or queen and you might want to boost their stats. And that is actually something that is possible here. Um, what you want to do for that is you, you need an heir that is not fully grown, that isn't an adult. Um, so I think below 16, this guy is 17, we can't tutor him, but we can tutor this guy, Didas Antigodid. And the way that you do this is it is a character interaction with the Trophaeus. The Trophaeus is the royal tutor, and if you uh, go to their character screen, you get the option Tutor Heir, which is going to cost you a chunk of oratory power and it'll give you a selection of all the eligible heirs and uh, if you select that person like this is a very good heir apart from the military stats um, this leader however not a very good uh, military person but if we select him what we could do is we could try to give him a martial education um, for that kind of stuff, we can have him study um, oration and commerce, um, bureaucracy, uh, the matters of the divine, or you can just try to get the um, you can just get your points back, and this kind of depends on the traits of the person. So this person is a, a lunatic, a poet, blunt and lazy and crafty. Um, so would not be a problem here um, with the corrupt, ambitious or cruel. Those would have negative uh, things. But this is a way for spending power and uh, improving your air. On the subject of barbarians, um, you see these strongholds all across the map. This is where barbarians spawn. And these barbarians, um, the way that these work is each of these barbarian strongholds over time builds up barbarian power. Um, which is influenced by this modifier over here, Barbarian Growth. So each month, um, 0 0.06 gets added to the Barbarian Power over here. And once it's big enough, um, then they will they will just break forth and attack your stuff, um, loot your provinces, all that kind of bad, um, all those kind of bad things. But what you can do is you can actually reduce that build up up to the point where they completely vanish, which is pretty nice. If you have a look at this place over here, this is also Barbarian Stronghold, but it's a very, very small Barbarian Stronghold, and it already has four civilization value. And that is the way to get rid of these Barbarian Strongholds, by boosting the civilization value. So you can see this has a buildup. It's the same Barbarian Stronghold, 0 0.06 per month, but it is being reduced by the civilization value, so 0 0.02. It's already quite a bit that reduces here the barbarian power. And as civilization goes further up, um, there will be no more growth of barbarian power. And then it will actually shrink and then it will be gone. Um, and the way that you do this is by putting this, the civilization effort, on an adjacent province. And that will slowly raise the civilization value of these impassable provinces where the barbarians live. And once that's done, um, their spawning will stop. So that's that's the way to get rid of these barbarian strongholds. Once you reach military tech six or higher, you'll be able to build roads for your troops. And the way that is done is in the unit itself. If you have ten cohorts in the army or more, then you're gonna uh, be able to pay twenty military power with this. So. Now we paid, we paid 10, uh, 20 military power and I guess I want to build a road down here so that I can march there faster. And now these guys will take quite a while to get there. You can see it's May now and these guys are going to arrive in September. So yeah, quite a bit of time. And once their road, once they finish their movement, the road will be built between these two provinces. And normal roads that all countries can build um, are quite effective still. So I kind of measured it. Um, when it previously took me three weeks to move from one province to another, um, with a road built, it just took me two weeks to get from one place to another. So that's like shaving off a third of the travel time. That is significant if you have to travel long distances. Um, the Romans can go and actually build military roads. 
um, which are quite a bit better than um, what the other countries have. But even normal countries can still build roads and improve their logistical capabilities, move armies quickly to the front line. Yay, you made it to the end of the video. By now you know the drill. Click the like button, subscribe, ring the bell, ring all the bells, ring your mother's bell. And thanks for watching.